Hey, welcome to another game development episode where we're recreating The Legend of Zelda in Game Maker. And a quick update for those of you who have been wondering where the videos are for the last two weeks. I got really sick and I couldn't even talk. Um, I couldn't even record. In fact, today this is about the fourth time I've tried recording this. Um, I, I've been coughing a lot, so hopefully I'll make it through this one. Um, or I'm going I'm to try to edit out all the coughing. Uh, this is going to be a fairly short one. We're going to set up the basics for room transitions. And what do I mean by that? Because we've done something called room transitions before, but what I mean is moving from one game maker room to another. And the situations would be something like going into a cave. Um, like this one's where you go get the sword. Um, so you would transition from here into the cave room. Um, and the other one would be say like, uh, other secret rooms or, um, even the, the labyrinths, the levels. Um, so we need the ability to move from our overworld to these other rooms. Here's another example. And I'm going to use this one to actually I have to go from here. I'm going to use this as an example. This is one that has two factor, uh, two things to note. You notice when I touch it, nothing happens. Um, I can walk on the sides on the bottom. It actually doesn't register that you walk on it until you are all the way on it. And it's an instant transition. So then we're we're brought into this cave, and then there's uh, what we'll call warp tiles right here. Where once we go out of the cave, it moves us back and it moves us back up to here. We're gonna do a simple version of this right now to lay the foundation. So let me show you that real quick. So a couple of things that we need. Um, we're gonna need a couple of test rooms um, to test this out. We're not gonna use this in the main rooms yet. We'll get to that in some of the follow up episodes. So I'm gonna call it room test one and we'll just make these uh 256 by 176 60 um 16 by 16. so um we're going to duplicate that one because i just i need two rooms to do the test and then we're going to do test two okay we've got our rooms uh test one needs to go to the very front because when we test this um when you load game maker it loads the very first room that shows up the next thing we need is uh, a warp tile. I went ahead and created it so we don't have to deal with it, but it's just a sprite that I created that's 16 by 16 uh, with the origin set to zero, zero. It happens to be blue in this case. So I'm gonna use that sprite um, in our warp object. Um, from the last episode, this is a little bit more organized. I just put things in folders. The player is now in a folder and the system things like object menu, game, and input are right here. Here we're gonna add a new object called object um, room warp. And let's set the sprite to equal to the warp tile. And what we'll need is to add an event. We're gonna do a create event. And this is just gonna set up some variables here that we need. So the first variable we're gonna put here is called precise hit is equal to false. And this is so that if we wanted to create that situation like that secret room where you had to be exactly on top of it, um, we want to register that. In other cases, we may not want that. Just if you hit it at all, we'll warp you. So we'll set it to false, meaning the default is not to precisely hit that. The next one is the room destination. This is a variable that's going to hold which room you want to go to when you hit this. And then the next two are where we want to put the player when they move to that room. So player target X is equal to zero and player target Y is equal to zero. So these are the defaults. When we put these in the room, we're going to set the actual values we want those to be. Okay. So next thing that we need is some code on the player for when they collide with a warp tile. So we're gonna go to object player. We're gonna right click and add a new collision event and we're gonna collide with the object room warp. In that code, um, we're simply gonna say room go to, this is a default function in GameMaker. The other, this is the other object that we're hitting. In this case, it's the object room warp. Um, and we're gonna say get the room destination. So we're going to move to that room. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our own X and Y variables to those targets. So we're going to say other player target X and Y other player target Y. 
and that's it there. Um, later when we want to, and we're going to check to see if the, it's an exact, if it's a precision hit, we'll add that code at another time. The next thing we need to do on the player object is to set the persistence to uh, check the persistence um, because we want the player to maintain its state as it moves between rooms. Otherwise, it, when we move there, um, the player would actually disappear in the other room. Okay, now we can go set up our objects in the actual room. So I'm in room test one. We're going to go to objects. Um, I'm going to add the input object and I'm going to add the player object. And I'm lastly going to add the war room warp. This is where we get to set the values for where do we want to go. The way you do that is you right click the object and you can see something called creation code. This is where we can override the creation values. Um, so once the object is created in the room, it will then run this creation code and um, reset everything that we, we choose to. Um, in this case, we're going to say room destination is going to equal to room test two. And we're going to say player um, target x, um, sorry, x is equal to, let's see, let's, let's pick some values in this room. So we want, we, let's pretend this is a cave and we're going to treat it like the cave room. So we want the player to end up showing right here at the bottom. In this case, it's 112 and 160. 112 and player target y is equal to 160. Okay. So that sets the values that we need. Um, once it collides, it'll use the collision event in the player and actually move the object over there. So next room, what we want to do is we don't need to add the player to this one because he's persistent. We're going to just go to the object and we're going to grab that player warp and we're going to add it to the bottom. It's going to be outside of the room. So when he touches the bottom here, anywhere on the bottom, and we right click and say creation code, we're going to move him back to the other room. So we're going to say um, uh, room destination is equal to room test one and player target X is equal to, um, let's set them to zero right now. Let's, uh, Y is equal to zero. Let's actually go look in that room and see where we want to put him. So when he pops back up, let's pop him back up to this upper right hand corner right there. Um, 128 and 32. Okay. Right click again, creation code. 128 and 32. That should be everything that we need. Let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, so something in um, <clears throat> player state is not set before um, we set the switch state. That should be set. We have a whole creation event missing. All right, so uh, for some reason, I have no idea uh, what happened, um, but the creation event got deleted from this code. I found an old code base that had it, put it back. I, that shouldn't be a problem for you guys. Um, so added it back, let's go ahead and test it real quick. Okay, so we've got our little room here. And so when we hit this, it should immediately take us to another blank room um, that's not gonna have the blue box and we should be at the bottom, and we are. So now, when we go back down, the hit object is below, and we should be showing up at the very top, which is correct. So that's actually the basics that we wanted to get set up that's gonna allow us to start creating our overworld and, and transitioning to different rooms. We'll start adding some different effects, like when you actually hit the warp tile, making that little effect like you're stepping down into the cave and so on and so forth. But this now gives us the freedom to start building out some levels, which we'll go ahead and get started in the next episode. All right. As always, give me feedback in the comments below. And I appreciate you guys um, watching. Um, the downloads will be on my Patreon page, which a link will be down below. So thanks as always. See you guys next time.